Welcome back, my loyal petafites. It is Chris Nichols here for Petapixel, and today I'm looking at the Tamron 11 to 20 f2.8 Di 3A RXD. I'm getting major deja vu. Oh yeah, because I've reviewed this lens before. So then why am I taking a look at this lens again? Well, that's because it is now available for Fujifilm X-mount. You can see this isn't a Sony body, it's an X-T4. Now, when we first reviewed this lens for deeper review, we didn't actually have a lot of good testing. It was one of our early videos. I think I did a sharpness test off my bamboo fence in the garden. Now we've got a proper lens chart that we've made. We've got, you know, years of experience now under our belt, yada, yada, yada. So let's now get to taking a second look at this fantastic lens. Now, when we last reviewed this lens, Tamron was just announcing that they were going to start making lenses for Fujifilm X mount. But this is one of the lenses we really wanted to see happen. And it took a little bit of time, but here we are. And why this is significant is because Fujifilm, they didn't really let a lot of other manufacturers make lenses. Zeiss did make a few. And of course, there were some third party boutique manual focus lenses, which are really nice. But as far as auto focusing ultra wide zoom lenses, there's just not a lot of options. So Fujifilm do make their excellent 8 to 16 f2.8. It's bright, but it's expensive. And then they make the 10 to 24 F4, which we're actually gonna compare here against this lens a little bit as far as sharpness goes. But this Tamron 11 to 20 is a much needed addition to this mount. So first let's talk about handling on the Tamron 11 to 20. Very lightweight lens, but you do have nice weather sealing here around the lens mount. This is coming at 335 grams. That's a sixth of a knock. So very easy to carry around, even though it is an F2.8 lens, 67 mil filter threads. But there are some features here with the handling that I don't love. So it's nice that they supply a plastic lens hood. And I mean, it's fine, but if you don't get it lined up, sometimes a little bit tricky to actually get it onto the body, but there we go. You've got some nice rings, although the manual focus does feel pretty sloppy. There's no real dampening there to smooth things out. Nice zoom ring though, but the real problem I have with this lens is that's all there is. I mean, there's no other controls. We don't have an autofocus manual focus switch. There's no aperture ring on here. And if you look at something like the Fujifilm 10 to 24 F4, that has a really nice aperture ring, autofocus, manual focus controls. It also has image stabilization built into the lens. This does not. Now on my X-T4, that's not a big deal. I've got some stabilization in the body, but if I was using an unstabilized Fuji body, that might be a consideration to take into mind. See, it's really nice to have versatility in an ultra wide angle lens. And one of the things I love about the Tamron 11 to 20 is actually just how close you can get for macro shots. So at 11 millimeters, you can get one to four life size reproduction. It's really not bad. The only downside is this, you're about six inches from the sensor plane and the lens itself, I mean, with the hood on there, I'm basically an inch away. You can see I'm focused right there. I'm basically touching it. So this hood is going to have to come off. It's causing a lot of problems putting a shadow on there. But really, I can do nice close-up capabilities with this ultra-wide lens. I will say, though, uh, at 11 millimeters, this close-up, your corners are going to go a little bit funky. So whatever you want to have nice and sharp, make sure it's more central. But with that wide-angle perspective, I can really have some fun here. So how does the Tamron 11 to 20 autofocus? Well, we've got a stepping motor in here, but it's actually quite lively. You can see her focusing from close to infinity. It's very snappy and I don't worry about it in an action situation. As well for video work, that stepping motor is nice because it's smooth. You're gonna get nice smooth focusing transitions. Unfortunately though, as I've mentioned already, that manual focus is sloppy. There's no quick way to disconnect it to manual focus. And unfortunately this lens does have a fair amount of breathing as you can see here. So for video applications, great for static shots. I wouldn't do any focus pulls with it if I could help it. So while I bask in the warm glow of the sunlight here, it reminds me to talk about shooting the Tamron 11 to 20 towards the sun. So first off, nice coatings, flare is very well controlled, no real loss of contrast, even shooting towards the sun, that is nice. However, if you stop down your aperture a bit, you will start to see some ghosting and it is fairly obvious, unfortunately. Now a lens like this would make sense for a lot of landscape shots and so you're gonna want nice sun stars. Well, unfortunately, you're not gonna get them here. The Tamron 11 to 20 just doesn't take very nice sun stars. You can see here, you get lots of points to the stars, but they just don't have a lot of definition. They're kind of mushy and blurry. So pretty boring overall, unfortunately. So clearly I have claimed this log for my petafites, or I'm desperately looking for a Captain Morgan sponsorship, one of the two. Uh, but let's talk about bokeh, okay? So the Tamron 11 to 20 at f2.8, if you get close up, can actually get some nice shallow depth of field. 
Bouquet actually quite round, not a lot of cat's eye, which is nice, but any specular highlights, bouquet balls do really actually pick up quite an onion ring effect inside as well. They're very busy looking. And so I wouldn't say it's the prettiest bouquet overall, but again, this is an ultra wide. You're not often gonna be getting super shallow depth of field to maximize that anyways. So let's just quickly talk about chromatic aberrations on this lens. So first off, lateral chromatic aberrations. That's like color fringing around contrasted areas, easy to get rid of. Luckily, there isn't really any here anyways to worry about, but longitudinal chromatic aberrations are much harder to fix in post, and that's where you get color fringes in the foreground and background out of focus areas. Again, fortunately, not really an issue here. So chromatic aberrations, don't worry about it. So let's talk about Tamron's sharpness here. Taking a look here at the center, shooting wide open at f2.8 at 11 millimeters first, you can see that actually lots of detail in the center. Nice contrast, very sharp. When we stop down here to f5.6, things don't improve that much because they're already really good. Okay, so now let's take a look at the corners here on the Tamron at 11 millimeters shooting wide open. You can see it's a little bit soft, but it holds up pretty well. And when you stop down to f5.6, those corners just sharpen up really nicely. The Tamron in general has nice consistent performance when you're shooting at 11 millimeters center or corners. Now when we take a look at this lens at 20 millimeters, wide open at f2.8, same story, very sharp. I mean, really nice detail, lots of contrast. Stopping down to f5.6, I don't really notice much improvement. Now here wide open in the corners, you can see that they're a little bit soft. We're not getting much detail, a little bit mushy. When we stop down to f5.6, that helps, but this is definitely where the Tamron has a bit of a weakness, the corners when you're shooting at 20 millimeter. Okay, so now we have here the Fujifilm XR WR 10 to 24 f4, the latest version. And we wanna do a comparison here just because these are not only similar focal lengths, but actually pretty close in price. Actually, the Fujifilm is a little bit more expensive. Now we've got to remember this isn't apples to apples. This is an f4 lens, this is an f2.8 lens, but I just want to give you guys a general idea of how they perform against each other. So first off, the Fujifilm shooting at 10 millimeters versus the Tamron, I actually found the sharpness to be very similar. But when we take a look at the corner sharpness here, you can see that the Tamron is clearly sharper than the Fujifilm when shooting wide open, even though the Fujifilm lens is shooting at f4. So clearly the Fuji doesn't have as good corner sharpness when shooting at 10 millimeters. But when I then took a look at this at the telephoto range. The Fujifilm at f4 in the center compared to the Tamron was pretty much just as sharp. But when we take a look at both lenses in the corners, I would still give the edge to the Fuji. It really has consistent performance at 24 millimeters. To make a long story short, you've got both excellent lenses here. The Tamron seems to do a little bit better at the wide angle range. The Fuji performing a little bit better at the telephoto range. If I had to give an edge, especially considering the fact we got a wider aperture, I would give it to the Tamron. So you know, I'm really happy to see the Tamron 11 to 20 move over now to the Fujifilm X mount because we've always liked this lens. I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on the Fujifilm 8 to 16 because you are getting a nice f2.8 aperture and the Tamron's very usable at that aperture for a lot of applications. So unless you really needed that extra width, I think the Tamron makes a lot of sense, especially for its very good price point. But considering how similar the price is, I still think the Fujifilm 10 to 24 has an absolute place in a lot of photographers' camera bags too. You know, especially for landscape photography. I like that it's got a slightly wider actual focal range. F4 versus F2.8, not that big a deal for most shots for landscape. I'm often gonna be stopping down the lens anyways. And then I like having things like the better handling, the aperture control. I like having the image stabilizer in the lens as well as the body for additional stability when I'm hand holding the lens. So I think there's still a good place for that. But it goes without saying that although the Tamron is a very simple lens. For the price, it's a very capable lens and it gives you a lot. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that second look at the Tamron 1120 for some of you. Uh, but you know, it's exciting that we have it for Fujifilm. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, please check those out. Do subscribe, become one of the petafights. Why not? And I'm going to have a cool new name for you guys next week, anyways. It's so much fun. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon with another episode on Petapixel. Pixel.